Hey, good morning guys. Happy Sunday. It's Dad. Um, I just wanted to make a super quick video because um, I've had two people ask me in the last uh, maybe a week or so <coughs> what specifically I use to uh, make my videos and um, obviously your needs are going to be really different depending on whether you're a huge YouTube personality or if you're just making things like I am that are you know for your friends and your family that you just um, you'd like them to look polished uh, but you don't really have a budget whatsoever for <laughs> for indulging your hobby so um, and there really is a big range of um, both uh, free open source software uh, as well as um, just if you go whole hog and kind of um, decide to really get the best of the best um, and I definitely don't cover all of it but I'll show you a couple of um, the primary programs that I do rely on uh, every single day when um, that I have on by default if I'm ever playing anything at all so um, I'll start with a uh, my start screen, um, I do unfortunately use Windows 10, um, which I am getting used to, um, but this is how I have my uh, start screen arranged um, on my main gaming PC, uh, and I use, I use an iMac for work, but um, I have this like uh, pretty uh, low to mid-range uh, <laughs> Alienware PC, uh, which is a phrase that I never thought that I would utter. Um, but so on the left, you just have all the utilitarian stuff. Um, you can use things like Dropbox to um, host video files uh, and allow others to stream them publicly. Um, I also use AirDroid to, um, you know, fetch recordings and stuff like that. Uh, but those are really tangential programs. Um, you can see in uh, the left hand column the little uh, icons. Uh, there's the Logitech um, webcam <coughs> excuse me, application and you can use that to adjust um, uh, within the actual software for um, your hardware to uh, improve contrast, uh, gain brightness. Um, and uh, orientation, things like that, um, but that should be specific to what you equip and what you use. Um, so I'm going to move on to the middle column at the top. You can see that I have all of my gaming software and things that I use. Um, I'm not really going to touch on server maintenance right now, but uh, basically I just go through um, my host control panel, which is browser-based. Um, uh, I use Archon or um, remote console uh, commands, and I rely on FileZilla, which is uh, one of a lot of uh, FTP, um, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, <laughs> of programs that are out there that, uh, that are fine to use. They're very basic. Um, it's a way of just getting your files on and off um, your server is back end. Um, so um, I have Steam, obviously. I have Mumble. Um, I don't use TeamSpeak or Ventrilo, um, but uh, I might start using TeamSpeak to play with one of my friends. Um, mainly I, I just use Skype for that, and there is a way to um, screen capture or grab from Skype. But I would say that if you are streaming group chats, um, Skype is really not the way to go. Uh, for voice, it's totally fine. Um, but it, it, it eats up a lot of um, resources, first of all, on, uh, on your CPU, as well as the fact that it has this really irritating kind of like dynamic shifting view that even if you turn off, um, your faces will just kind of be bobbing back and forth. So uh, I know that there are third-party programs that can actually break uh, Skype feeds down into a side-by-side -side symmetrical uh, interview format, which looks a lot better when you're streaming something like, you know, two friends playing. Uh, people have started also using Uvu, um, O-O-V-O-O, -O -O, uh, and I had that installed for about a day 
and then I decided that it seemed a little bit spammy or um, I don't know I just caught a weird feeling off of it so uh, right now it's it's Skype and it's fine um, below that I have my other um, sort of secondary gameplay clients that I barely use like Uplay, Origin, um, stuff like that um, I have my Corsair Utility Engine, and I'll talk more about that when I go over uh, the hardware and actual equipment that I use, um, which I've also been asked about. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, near the top, you have um, the icon for OBS, uh, which is uh, Open Broadcasting Software, which was rec recommended to me by a friend who keeps up sort of with... Um, whole esports and streaming um, scene, I guess. Uh, and it's open source and free of charge. Uh, has a lot of room for, for plugins um, and is constantly being updated, obviously, because there's a large user base and developer base that are very devoted to kind of uh, improving the quality of the software. Um, for me, I like after hours of um, tweaking and optimizing, I still couldn't get the quality of picture that I wanted, but I know that a lot of people have had success um, using OBS, so I suggest that you give it a try and um, be a little bit patient with it, maybe, um, because I, I do tend to kind of sometimes uh, <laughs> Um, drop things that aren't um, going exactly the way that I want them to um, a little too quickly. So OBS is definitely definitely something that I've uh, revisited a couple of times, even after I switched to um, XSplit, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute. But um, continuing onwards, there's a you know all that Microsoft Office stuff, um, and on the right hand side is really mainly. Uh, sort of the core group of um, utilities and applications that I use. And I will say that if you have a budget of zero dollars and zero cents, um, you can still create pretty much um, perfect quality uh, feeds and uh, live streams, local recordings, uh, static images to use for um, branding. Uh, the watermark that is actually not in this video, but that is pretty much uh, overlaid on top of all of our YouTube videos, was made pretty much day one in MS Paint, and you can tell. But it's it's so little that nobody cares. It just um, it just puts our identity on on the video. Um, so I have I happen to have a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, but I would say. Um, through work, but I would say that it's complete overkill if all you're trying to do is um, stream or broadcast to uh, f a few people, a small audience, even um, if you're numbering in the 10,000s, you really don't need any of this. Um, if you're doing a lot of really, uh, really involved uh, editing work, so uh, not live streaming, but if you're taking local recordings or captures of live streams and um, combining it with static imagery, uh, trying to create uh, special effects, splash screens, um, theme music, all that kind of stuff that, um, that some uh, YouTube personalities seem to be super duper into, um, then maybe Adobe Creative Cloud is the way for you to go. But um, I just happen to have it, and I actually often choose um, not to use, for instance, Photoshop, even if it is uh, considered sort of the gold standard, and even though I do own it, simply because, uh, for instance, a program like GIMP um, is just easier for me. So... Uh, I mean, this is what Photoshop looks like. It's a uh, it's very hoity-toity, um, and uh, it goes by a monthly prescription prescription subscription. Um, goes by a monthly subscription, and I also get a discount as a student, so that might be something you want to look into. Um, I 
used to use Photoshop a lot for very basic processes, just like cropping, con contrast, and things like that. But um, more and more lately, I feel like uh, waiting two minutes for the splash screen to go away and um, for the program to be fully uh, utilizable is kind of not worth it. I, I literally just use um, the stock Windows 10 um, photo launcher in order to do things like cropping or adjusting brightness or contrast and it may not be as nuanced as um, having access to um, you know like levels, curves, brightness, whatever, all of that stuff. Um, you know color saturation um and you may just be getting things like filters and then seeing a bunch of kind of cruddy instagram filters on the side but uh, i think it's more than sufficient so um that's just my take on it um and a lot of uh i think um windows pcs are also shipping with photoshop elements which is a very pared down version um as well so this is what it looks like super exciting um you have a toolbar on the left that lets you do a lot of different things like a uh, uh, crop select lasso magic wand brush pencil you know you can freehand draw you can create uh, geometric elements overlay text um and then you can apply filters and do a lot of it's a very versatile uh, piece of software but for our purposes, you really don't need to get into any of that at all. So uh, this is the um, actual, um, I would say probably, I was talking about how Photoshop is the gold standard when it comes to image editing uh, within the industry, you know, like for pre-press, um, uh, which is my field, or uh, graphic design, stuff like that, uh, photo editing, um, I guess uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, which are both Adobe products, um, but GIMP, I would say, is the gold standard of free open source software um, when it comes to image editing um, because it has pretty much all the functionality that Photoshop does. Um, it just happens to be a little bit less intuitive and a little bit less pretty, but uh, you have essentially all the same tools it looks kind of ugly. It looks like a fancied up version of maybe um, MS Paint or something like that. Um, but the more you explore into it, the more you'll be surprised and um, I think happy about uh, what it is capable of doing. And I suggest that for, um, for GIMP as well as for uh, VLC, which you can see in the right hand column, um, and Audacity, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, um, that you should maybe just source it from SourceForge um, because uh, I trust them a lot and sometimes there are phishing websites or whatever that'll take you to um, a very uh, trustworthy looking website that uh, is actually going to steal your life and um, infect you with a lot of diseases um, on your PC. So SourceForge is really great and you can, while you're there, you can also just look around at what else there is. Um, and then moving on finally uh, to the actual broadcasting software. Uh, after my um, frustration using uh, OBS, which I talked about a couple seconds ago, I actually decided to um, try out a three-month trial, which cost me $14, um, of the XSplit um, suite of applications, which are, are there, are two op there are two applications called Broadcaster and Gamecaster, um, and one is really meant for just the most basic and uh, intuitive, uh, super quick, um, you know, on the fly without any transitions or anything like that. Um, and that would be Gamecaster. Um, and that's my face. Um, and I actually have that open in order to show you that along the top bar, you can very quickly select uh, to turn your stream on and off, which you register earlier on um, in, within the application itself. Uh, but you basically hit a control tab the way that you would hit shift tab in Steam, 
games to open the Steam overlay. You hit Control Tab in order to open this overlay. And from here you can control whether your microphone is on, whether uh, the system sounds are on, or the game sounds are on, and whether uh, the camera is on. So in this case, um, you can see that my webcam is operational. Um, and there are two icons to the left directly under the image of me uh, that says visibility. So in stream recording um, means that others will be able to see it and you'll be able to see it in the final uh, product. But um, if you uh, select in-game HUD, um, it will actually, uh, your own face will cover up probably some vital parts of uh, gameplay, for instance, um, when I put the uh, image in the upper left hand corner, it makes selecting classes uh, in TF2 a little bit more difficult because it does cover up uh, our beloved little scout. So um, just, I guess, know where things are in your game. Um, I have to move things around when I'm playing Counter-Strike because uh, things like the um, the small, um, what is it, uh, the radar map uh, near the top um, and in different modes, um, you'll see on the left and the right who who on each team is alive or dead. Um, for both games, it'll generally be a text chat in the lower left. Um, so yeah, just kind of play around with that, maybe when you're not actually um, broadcasting anything important. Um, but, uh, I, I don't really use that so much anymore, but the, the main, um, upside to that is that, uh, Gamecaster, uh, the mo more basic application, um, is completely compatible to use in, um, a fully, uh, excuse me, full screen, like borderless window or just full screen, um, which... Uh, I would argue is probably better for um, your frames per second and your general like resolution and smoothness anyway. Um, you don't want to be playing windowed unless you have to, uh, in my opinion. Um, but there are a lot of other reasons that you might want to use uh, Broadcaster, which is the infinitely more complex and capable uh, cousin of Gamecaster. Uh, Broadcaster and Gamecaster both come with the second tier license, so the bottom tier license is free, um, and you can actually use Gamecaster, I think, up to 720p resolution, which should be decent for YouTube, um, without a watermark, and anything beyond that, you'll have this, like, gigantoid um, XSplit logo. So if you actually look at my old YouTube videos before I figured out that I could actually remove that, um, you'll see a really big XSplit logo on it. Um, so I have the menu at the bottom open just to show you guys that um, each scene essentially is what I've been showing you here. I'm using Broadcaster right now and recording locally within it. Um, and right now I have each scene labeled separately. So for instance, uh, if I go here, um, the button is called start screen, Photoshop splash, um, etc. Um, in this screenshot, uh, they're all unnamed, um, but you know, you can adjust uh, the transition times and what effects you can get. I would say that most of them are pretty cheesy unless you're trying to be cheesy, in which case go for it because cheesiness is great. Um, but uh, otherwise you're probably just gonna wanna go with like fade. That's what I use um, right now. I'm, I think I'm using left to right. Doesn't matter, uh, not the point. Um, so in the left hand bottom uh, menu, you'll be able to see uh, that you can capture regions of your screen and the application is smart enough that it will be able to recognize what application it's inside of while you're um, grabbing that portion so that even if that window is covered up later by something else, um, it won't actually obscure what is being broadcasted or recorded. Um, and then 
the thing that's covered by ad source is actually uh, I believe game capture and they have an auto detect which I do not trust or rely on um, but generally if you have your game open already and I play both Counter-Strike and Team Fortress oh and Gary's mod um, the main three uh, the trifecta I play those all three uh, windowed um, in order to use this if I happen to be recording um, and it will actually show up in the menu um, named uh, because it will have detected it as running um, if you want to add a watermark um, you can use the third option media file um, or if you just want to add um, you know like a URL to your home page um, I think my 100th video video um, just kind of has um, the new domain name scrolling across the bottom you can do that using text um, and if you right click on any of the elements that you've introduced onto your screen uh, that will open up a um, a small menu that allows you to do a range of things in terms of um, X Y axis positioning um, locking auto cropping resizing bordering shaping um, whether or not your mouse shows up in game which um, is really important to me because I happen to find it kind of distracting unless it's some sort of tutorial um, seeing the mouse is really unpleasant for me in any kind of broadcast um, so and then audio devices I actually you should really uh, tweak that before you get started um, and make a bunch of local recordings and see what sounds the best uh, I used to add a separate option for my headset um, which is a synth uh, plug-and-play um, and I'll talk about that one as well um, a little bit more um, when I talk about what I physically use when I'm playing um, but uh, it started it worked fine for a while then it started to create this weird feedback loop um, and I had to go into, you know, the whole Windows system settings for sound, um, cleared everything out so there was just one input and it was still doing the same thing. Um, and uh, for a lot of you guys, your um, webcam will by default be picking up sound as well. So if you have that, you're going to be getting either some kind of uh, feedback or echo. And uh, audio feedback is when... Um, there's sound being output and then being picked up uh, by a recording source like a microphone um, and then being put out again so what you're gonna get is an increasingly loud or um, very difficult to understand audio stream um, uh, so <laughs> feedback loops are not fun unless you uh, play in a harsh noise band so uh back to broadcaster and i promise you i'm almost done um what else do we have yeah so for audio devices i actually just don't use anything anymore because i believe that um my microphone sound is actually uh being channeled through my system sound and coming back in to uh, the stream so um and then under other you can actually uh capture skype itself uh, you can't do things like that in Gamecaster. Um, what it does have is a lot of functionalities related to Twitch. And because I am not an active Twitch user, I do Twitch everything, but it's not for the purpose of talking to an audience. It's really just to kind of have something running if some of my friends are bored. And mainly because um, they're uh, like, in-platform highlight editor is actually surprisingly um, robust so I use that to cut out clips directly after I'm done um, uh, casting something so uh, yeah but you can turn on things like um, twitch chat or whatever uh, there was one day when I had that on and I think there was one guy who came in and said honey your face is too close to the camera and then the other one said $20 for pictures of your naked breast. So uh, I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm just going to go back to, um, and I have a bit of a cold, so I'm really sorry that I've just been like, kind of like hawking up loogies in your ear. 
Um, but hopefully um, some of this has been helpful. The final thing that I will say is that if you do want to test your audio, um, especially when you're also running um, other background uh, streams of noises, um, streams of noise, streams of sounds. Um, for instance, like if you have TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or Mumble or Skype going and you want to see if it's coming in through the system sounds or if you have the right thing um, uh, selected um, and if in Broadcaster uh, you can see that there are uh, microphone and uh, system sound levels, um, which you should be seeing moving um, and hopefully not peeking out. Um, I like to stay in the bottom one third range um, uh, just and try and keep my mic a little further away from my <laughs> from my mouth um, so that I don't get those popping P's and sibilant S's, um, which is just left over from when I used to work in radio. Um, but I forget that a lot now, <laughs> um, which is why you'll often hear me doing things like just coughing straight into your ear. So Audacity is also, um, it's all the way on the right hand side if you can't see it, three down uh, right side column is a really fantastic uh, uh, multi-layer, multi-channel audio editing um, open source software uh, free of charge. Um, and you don't need to get fancy with any plugins. All I do is I just set up one stream and I record myself talking. And if there is something off with uh, the way I've configured my system sounds, so that's before you get to the point that um, you're checking uh, feedback and stuff inside of Broadcaster. So this isn't going, going to be able to check that for you, but uh, this is a step prior to make sure that everything else is in place. Um, I just record a couple of like five second clips, um, testing, testing in Audacity. Um, you can use VLC Media Player, which um, is probably the most or one of the most uh, robust open source um, video and audio players in terms of uh, how many codecs that it uh, um, supports or file formats. Um, and I know that you can do something with remote streaming, um, which is probably useful for people who use their capture cards and uh, like to dual stream remotely with you know a friend or a spouse or something like that. Uh, I don't do that, <laughs> um, but I'm sure there's a way that you can figure out how to do that with NVLC. Um, and then uh, in the row just above that, you will see um, the VSDC uh, video editor, which I actually used for a couple of weeks um, because I like the idea of open source. I like the idea of free. Um, I like the idea that they there are developers out there making things that are normally very expensive um you know for no good reason really other than to sort of perpetuate this idea that it's um this high tier exclusive software that you know only industry professionals are allowed access to um i like the idea that developers are working on that however um I went back to Windows Movie Maker, which does not natively ship with Windows 10 anymore, but you can just Google it and download the suite that I think they published in 2012 and came um, pre-installed, I think, up to 8 or 8.1, I'm not sure. But it works fine and it actually imports and exports a lot more quickly. and. Uh, Finally, I've had to use uh, Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro in the upper left hand corner, um, right side columns, um, to do a couple of more involved things uh, like uh, cropping, adjusting uh, orientation in other ways, um, uh, just a bunch of stuff that you couldn't really do in Movie Maker. But it is a, a super professional piece of software that um, people who shoot in digital or convert from um, film legitimately use to create actual movies. So uh, there are a lot of options and like I was saying at the beginning, um, probably overkill for what you need to do. Uh, 
right to the right of that Adobe After Effects is actually really fun if you have a knack for um, messing around with uh, filters, effects, animation, stuff like that. Um, you can get a little bit more creative about what kind of content you can put into your videos um, aside from just, you know, raw recordings of, um, you know, my face. <laughs> So um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if I can think of anything else, I will get back to you on that. But I just want to reiterate the point that uh, all of the original imagery that is still in use today on my server's MOTDs and on our YouTube video watermarks was created in MS Paint. So, uh, props to MS Paint, honestly, um, that shit is bonkers, I love it. Um, so, uh, have a happy Sunday, and, um, I hope this helped whoever, um, asked me about, um, how I get this stuff done. It's really easy <laughs> and silly, um, and fun. So, I'll see you guys later.